Hello and welcome back to the Earth Guys Wild Rift video. In the bottom left you see Mr. Chronix and he is playing Caitlyn. He's going to be playing a new build with Stormraiser, so beware, this might be a little bit spicy and he's playing against a Pike Kaiser within Nami and Caitlyn. After watching this video you will understand how to pile your champion during your lightning phase and what to properly do. In this instance, Kais is a very weak laning champion, and as a Caitlyn, you can punish this wonderfully well. With the help of an army, you can even do so. You can even do it even easier. The only thing that's potentially dangerous is Pike going for cheeky things, and here the Nami should not hit the wave. She should. Okay, I'll, I'll actually rewind this. I'll rewind this. I'll open up the epic pen because it's very, very important that this gets literally like imprinted into your brain. Okay, first off. The very dangerous thing here, this brush here is potential danger because Pike could be in there. There's already a pink ward, so it's already fine. However, Nami can already be here. Why can Nami be here? Very simple. Kai's has a low range AD carry and Pike cannot hook for minions. And therefore, using these minions as an invisible wall makes it impossible for the Pike to play. He can only do so something, he can only do something level two. Now, there's one more thing we need to talk about. We see Pike. Nami should not be here anymore and she should not do anything up here because it's not relevant. Because now, what we are about to do, Nami walks here. Nami stays in this brush here and completely denies what Kaiser can do. Because Kaiser can no longer access the wave because of level 1 she'll most likely skill Q. And what Crimes can do uh, if she skill level uh, skill W for whatever reason on level 1 or hits level 2 at a later point, you can body block the spell to deny the gold and the XP because they are not allowed to just get there. Because now look, look what the Nami is doing. She's just hitting minions. The wave was fine and now the wave is slow pushing into the Kaiser, so the Kaiser is not forced to walk up because she'll get these minions eventually and she's not put into a position where she'll lose anything. Because look, she can just wait, chill, wait for the next minion to walk up, even last at this, she would normally not be allowed and now he's forced to crash this wave because of the mistakes of the Nami. And the chances of them diving the Kaiser are probably close to zero. This is a very big flip if this is if this goes for a dive, yeah, because it's it's not reliable to hit anything. Now with the poke damage happening, it's way more possible. And now the Nami just does another big mistake. What is the Pike doing? What is the Pike doing? Excuse me, I need to go back again. Cause look, look, the Nami is dead. She's stunned. Pike, just walk here and hook her back here. What are you doing? What are you aiming for? Excuse me? <laughs> Ex excuse me? Like, th this is what just makes me so... Oh, no. Oh, my God. I was so close. But this is just something that makes me so unreasonably angry. Because I'm seeing so much int happening over and over again. And it's so difficult, Flash. Yeah. It was so obvious. Like, the moment you see a pike do this, he will always flash. But yeah, um, I don't want to be the party pooper, but this is all a consequence of Nami's actions. Sounds unfortunate, right? And yeah, like, if you're in the support position here and you play support, please listen to my words, what I just told you. Um, so you'll have far easier games. Because the Pike made this play, and if you understand what to do, the, Ka the Kaisa is just doomed. She will not be able to do anything anymore. But yeah, now let's get back into the game, and without any negativity. What's next? The Nami last hits. <laughs> Speaking of my non-existent negativity, the wave was very much fine. It was slow pushing into Kranix, but Nami last hit to minions, so now they have to push. And spirit, like the the Evelyn, the jungle, walked down here to capitalize on the slow push. To punish the enemy. And now we're forced to go for a dive, and now the plating gold has seen Evelyn. Because the coin flew towards her. And for some reason, the Kaiser is still walking up. But do you, do you see? Like, there are so many things that are happening 24-7 right in front of you that people are just not even paying attention to. And now the Nami dies again. Oh, nice try with the Flash Ultimate with the Evelyn. Sadly, didn't work out. Pike looking for a play here. Uh, you you want to know the funny part? I'll, I'll go back again. Um, Kronik is 100% dead. Like, he's just dead. He's dead. Now tell me why. 
in, in the comment, before you watch this unfold, just pause this and tell me why is he dead. You see this action here, and all Pike has to do is ult here. Like, slightly behind them, so the ult hits the Evelyn, so he teleports here, and then his, his third ability drags after him. These both are stunned, they can collapse. Because Evelyn used ultimate, so there's no more danger. Now look what happens. Well. Well, 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 well. The yellow card, and now it still works out. And this will probably... Nice turn back. Exhaust coming through here. Kaisa! I am... Shook! What am I seeing here, my friends? Ay, ay, ay. Twisted Fate still being here. Vladimir now finally on the move after... Like... And now, why is the Vladimir coming now? He could have just stayed mid and gotten plating. So why is he coming so delayed? It doesn't make sense. Anyway, we are off to a very, very, very rough start. And I'm choosing this specific gameplay because I want to just showcase how much support actually does matter and decisions matter. And it's just for me very, very important that everyone understands or gets like a, a slight understanding of how everything functions in the lane because nowadays nobody plays lane anymore. Gets hooked here, has to probably flash here, gets nearly stun carded by the Twisted Fiddler. Has to just be very, very conservative here. Good damage onto the pike, but will never able to be killed. There's just no way to kill him, pike is just too tanky and there's somebody in front of him. Everyone now do your rotation. In the brush next to your recalling. I like this recall position of Evelyn though, because um, she puts herself relatively close to potential action, allowing her to respond. I don't necessarily know what Vladimir was trying to achieve, but we'll just say it's it's fine. Ah, oh, the Pike is guarding the Twisted Fate because Chronix wanted to cancel his recall. And by canceling this recall, he would deny the tempo on the map without any investment because he would have stayed here down here anyway. Pike looking for a play, he is over the wall again like this, and it's very close to clear what he wants to do with a flash play. Good kill here, doesn't even have to do it. Like, he, he basically just, uh, he knew the Pike is going to do this because it was very obvious due to the actions, the intent he has showcased, and then he just punished the Pike. So this will allow him to get a lot of gold back. And this is one of the things that always happens in solo queue, like the, the constant throwing for zero reason, Nami throwing a bubble also for no reason. Why? Is, what is Nami afraid of? Just walk. The guy can't just kill you. He could have just walked straight down and if the Twisted Fate uses the stun card and the Q on the Nami, then the Caitlyn could turn. And now she spent so much time running in circles that she actually died because she perceived the enemy Twisted Faith as a threat even though he was not a threat to her life. And this happens like constantly in, in every game you play and you just need to pay close attention. I recently had a coaching session um, where it's just very, very visible how many times people are not aware when people actually get themselves killed and how to set up a kill and what happens as a consequence of what you do with the wave. Maybe if you want to, um, I can at least upload one coaching session with a uh, player. So you get an idea what you actually get and what it does. Because uh, most of the time when I see people play this game, it's more like, let's just do these things because they seem fun. And yeah. Now going quick for a quick little rotation as they already committed time towards the the dragon. Might as well get some plating gold here and then back off again. The Kaiser, the only issue is what is the Pike brother? What are you doing? The only issue here is that the um the Kaiser is getting some free money on the bottom side of the map, which is something we really do not want to happen. However, we get a lot of like um shared gold here, so it's not the worst of scenarios. And we're coming back. The only issue is now that Kaiser got so much gold and We've fundamentally not punished her laning phase at all due to what I told you happened. And you just need to have something, um, like something like this on your mind, and please punish them accordingly. Also, whenever you're walking back to lane, do yourself a favor, quickly check jungle camps. And th theoretically speaking, yeah, if this was the highest elo possible and uh, there's nothing to achieve in the game. Holding this wave closer to your tower would have been the best course of action. But yeah, since everyone is playing deathmatch, 
uh, we just collect every piece of gold. Because in, in theory, you can freeze this slow pushing wave into a tower down there until you have enough information on enemy champions, and as soon as you have enough in info about enemy champions, you start pushing this and go for the tower. So the enemy will get denied minions because their minions are more than yours, they will kill yours, and you're at complete safety being so close to your tier 2 tower. Uh, but in most of the games, you will not be actually seeing any of this put into action because people uh, like to just fist fight a lot for no reason. Even if it's losing, like, <laughs> that's the funniest thing. Even if it's losing them like a thousand gold, doesn't matter. They would still go for a fist fight that earns them 300 gold for whatever obscure reason they come up with. I just love it. Okay. We're getting closer to the energized Nirvana here. We have Stormraiser and we have the Magnetic Blaster, double energized galore. And if you're wondering, Mr. Chronix, why are you putting points into your traps? Having points in your traps increases the amount of traps you can have at the same time being ready to be placed down. And having these traps is quite a cool thing because it allows you to create space. What do I mean with creating space? If the enemy has any movement type of champion, you can utilize your trap to deny entry. Let's say in a Kali or a Pike, all of these champions have a dash. You can deny Akali's ult, Akali's third ability completely by placing a trap in front of you because she can't go through it. And with that in mind, you can basically survive their engage without just dying while dealing maximum amount of damage. Ooh, nice hook by the Pike, but doesn't accomplish anything. Guy is too tanky as well. Evelyn on the hunt here, and we're just playing Aram, playing the safest mode ever possible. And if team has a lot of... Excuse me, I played too much Path of Exile. Enemy has a lot of chase down potential. Oh, sadly, the execute damage didn't come through. Pike now coming forward. Protobelt's forward as well. But Kronix has played enough Pike to see this one coming from 50 miles away. And this game is a lot closer than most of the other games, simply because of the things that happened in the early game. And that's why, why I specifically picked this one. Because I remember watching it on stream like... Bro, you, you just you just can't you just can't be serious. And um, generally speaking, if you're like an AD carry or support main, or like doesn't matter. If you're like any lane main, how familiar are you with what waves can do for you and what you can do with support item? How you can zone people and what you can do with waves in general? Like, let me let me just know because I'm curious how much you know. Because when when I play the game, it almost feels like nobody has any idea, even. Sovereign players have no singular idea what to do, and the only thing you see is maybe two players of each role that are, have been Sovereign that know what to do. And all the other people are just happy deathmatching around. Zippity Zapper, this is the Zapper build. Like you, you, you basically budget Zeri, <laughs> technically speaking. I should, I should try Zeri with this, honestly. If you're on the way now, the pea shooter Caitlyn on the move, ghost being popped, the twisted fate coming closer. He's hovering the pit here. He's trying, to, like he's trying to play in a way where there's a lot of space, but his team is not responding to this at all. Now the enemy is engaging and he can finally play. Needs to be careful though. Like, oh, he's gonna go for another flash. He knew about again. Do you see? He played so much. Oh, this is so close. No way. It actually works. No way, bro. You can't make this shit up. Look at him. Look at this goofy guy in the bottom left. Absolutely smurfing on the gamers down there. But yeah, um, if you play enough Pike in your life, you will definitely see what Mr. Pike wants to do every single time. And it's such an amazing advantage if you have any idea what Pike can do to you because you played Pike a little bit. It makes life so much easier. Popping off. Honestly, with the new Infinity Edge buffs coming in, <clears throat> I still don't know if you can actually build it on a lot of AD carries without just throwing your life away. Because don't forget, you lose like up to 180 HP or something. Just gone. That's like late game bone plating, just removed. And you're not an AD, as an AD carry, you just die instantly already. So is it really worth it? Nice full body Vladimir, Pike is going for too much. 
with Pike dead now and Shivana being up there, they can try to bait a Nasher to get Shivana's ultimate. And with Shivana's ultimate being down, life gets really troublesome because she cannot enter, she cannot play at all. Shivana waiting in the wings. Nice slow here by the Storm Razor, dealing a lot of chip damage here. Also, Red Buff is so broken. Vlamina going in, dealing a lot of damage. Twisted Fate caught in the crossfire. Kaiser just going back with the killer insect and just instantly dying. Now, the enemy team has two people only alive with Pike respawning, and they have free access to Nasher. Caitlyn can hit Nasher from behind, so she can be like the god the god dog for the uh, Shivana, and Renekton should also come. Like, if Renekton comes, everything is fine as well. And the Caitlyn will just here stand guard, like you will not go past. Pike goes over the wall and there's the trap! That, exactly what I talked about utilizing, I, this might have been more luck than anything, but still. Utilizing traps in that way is exactly what you want to do. Plus the hitbox of the traps is absolutely cringe. And everyone who's played against Caitlyn can absolutely confirm that hitbox of traps are cringe. Ah, uh, the Elgato, look at him, the Elgato issue. I know so, I know it's too well, happens to me 50 times a second. Okay, okay, okay. The game is getting closer to its end. It's the peak. We have Nasha. And now we just have to just be uh, a little bit patient. Like, this here is already unnecessary risk. And why you're asking this is unnecessary risk? Because we don't have QSS against Twisted Fate. And if some, like, if he comes with Flash and the teammates are around, um, if none, none of us are, none of our teammates are around, we might just die instantly. Because we don't have counterplay. Evelyn goes for a quick combo here. The Pike hits the combo but doesn't achieve anything. Fiora now goes in and now it's a Caitlyn damage angle. No QSS, we will certainly fall and we just dissipate. Another kill coming in and another one. Ooh, nice flash by the Evelyn. But yeah, um, this is what I mean when I say purposeless fights and not waiting for teammates' appearances. Look, he's, he's golf clapping in the bottom left. But this is still a mistake. Like, needing to wait for people to be in a position and then responding to the play is what you need to do. And since he has he's chosen to take Proto Belt because he wants to avoid the Pike, uh, or wants to be more proactive, he basically got absolutely yellow carded into Narnia. But... And now, we will actually move on to the second game to make sure to uh, give you at least some more entertainment. What do you guys think about this one? Because I think it's a magnificent idea. Maybe he shows, because uh, I don't remember, maybe he shows the um, damage stats as well. That would be nice. Maybe he doesn't. Um, but if you generally prefer me to just make a little like page, I can do so, like and I can showcase the runes. I'll, I'll do so, so I'll put them at the, at the start anyway. So don't worry. Dead Renekton thing looks so goofy. What? Look at this goblin smiling. Okay. Put that done. Into the second one we go. Okay. We have Vayne, Lux, into Lulu and Caitlyn. What happens in this lane? Um, it all depends on the Lux. Lux is the complete and sole carry of this lane. And Lux needs to poke the enemy and hit a binding. And then can Vayne, Vayne can utilize her auto attack, tumble, auto attack reset for maximum damage. It's the only way. There's also one thing you do not want to do against a Lux Vein lane. You do not want to be the one that's getting pushed in, so you have to kind of think about constantly pushing in, since you don't have any engaged support in this instance, and the enemy team is a double ranged lane as well. Nice shield by the Lulu, avoiding some damage. Vayne is uh, having some trouble here. Looking for better days, I guess. Good damage control by the Lulu. Getting a lot, like, this is the power of Caitlyn, though, when it when it comes to these, like, little uh, situations. You just get a chip damage every single time. Bro. Okay. Okay, I don't remember this. What happened, this one? <laughs> Did she just disconnect? Oh, no. And we actually have a jungler with a brain. Please tell me you're diving. Bro. Bro, hello, walk in the tower. Why is bro... Well, do you remember when I said we have a jungler with a brain? I apologize for misleading you. I sincerely apologize for my lies that I've just spread. Because that one was just absolute pain. 
You, you, we also minions were there, so there was no reason to flash. <laughs> Tragedy. Absolute travesty. Now we go for a big recall. We'll pick up the um, Gluttonous Greaves. If you have a Soraka, I believe going attack speed boots is the best. And I can also imagine that maybe with Stormraiser being a thing, we can also debate going like full offense. Full offensive and not even give a damn about sustain anymore. You know, just flip it kind of style. We just go Stormraiser into BT. Maybe that is also a possible play. Similar to the Kindred approach now. And you see uh, what I was talking about in game one, freezing the wave. Like he wants to be shielded right now. Okay, no shield. Or to, like Lulu to tech. <laughs> well, this goes out to all the enchanter mains. If you use a spell, it needs to have purpose. Why are you shielding someone? To mitigate damage, but what is, if there's no damage? Or alternatively, why are you giving a shield as a Lulu to someone? Well, to give them Arden or to give them picks. And my cat just jumped onto uh, my window ledge. Uh-huh. Peering out of the window while I'm peering at gameplay. But do you look at the, the shield dominance? Now, this is a concept that's very, very important. If Lux has Q, like her binding spell, Chronix can't play like this. If she puts it on cooldown buttress, nice, nice play by the uh, Lux actually to use it that way. Now we have a big problem in the river. Good damage though by the Zed. Going for a quick little avoidance here. Kama uses ultimate, gets so much damage, she has to flash away. Well. <laughs> well, well, well. Ugh. He got instantly bopped. Poor guy. <laughs> but yeah, for some reason, the Mundo's getting absolutely stomped up there against the Riven. I don't really know why. Uh, our jungle is uh, flashless. Maidenless, by the way. And now we can run on the vein or at least force her condemn. Uh, in these situations, what happens is Lulu buffs you with Whimsy. And you run after her. And now again, it's the same situation. Tanking the minions. He wants the Lulu to tank it because the Lulu is not the one frontlining. And therefore her HP bar is less important than Chronic's HP bar. And now the enemy is forced to walk forward again. To go for CS and constantly overextend. With the Darius in the jungle. And them being very, very much weaker in a straight up fight. Unless they hit the Lux bindings or like ease like this constantly. Oh, look, playing against Lux is so annoying. This champion is so busted. Like, they simplified this champion? Like, just tell me, honestly. What are your what's your take on Lux after the rework? Isn't this champion just way too easy and just does way too much damage with the amount of effort you have to put in? I just find it like that. There's so many champions in the game that are either way too much effort to play or are way too easy and just do way too much damage. Picking up the movement speed buff. Okay, uh, one of the biggest secrets about Lulu, by the way. Lulu isn't so broken because she keeps her AD carry safe, no. Lulu is so broken because the, the champion provides the AD carry with a massive amount of stats. She grants you attack speed, she grants you on it magic damage with the picks, and since she's building Arden as well, you get granted even more. So, effectively, she quite literally doubles your damage, which is a massive problem. Not only this, if, you're, if your build doesn't have much attack speed, she even fixes that for you. So this champion basically does everything for you, apart from creating space. That is the only issue of this champion. It doesn't create space for you. And what do I mean by space? Space generally uh, refers to a situation in which you are allowed to play in. So let's say somebody, like you're playing against a Nautilus, right? What is the most important thing to do? Allowing your AD carry to run straight at enemy. So you need to be in front of him blocking the hook. Because your HP bar as a support, for example a tank support, is less like less useful or less important than the HP bar on a carry. You won't die being hooked, he will die. Him, having, or him or her having to think about spacing, avoiding this hook, will force him to deal less damage because he has to walk in weird places. If he's allowed to walk in a straight lane, 
or line, he can do as much damage as possible without any drawback because he's constantly safe due to you blocking the linear skill shot right in front of him, completely denying this source of damage constantly, allowing him to be the sole damage dealer. If the AD carry then at the same time has to worry about his positioning, avoiding skill shots that should be blocked while dealing damage, while t tracking the enemy's movement, it becomes very very difficult to maneuver and do anything because nothing is nowhere safe. And in this scenario, we have a beautiful scaling lane. Um, it's completely fine. And if there's downtime and we cannot go for anything, like you see, there's no information on the map, only one person. So we just go for the Croc Camp. It's just too easy. And if you're a Caitlyn, just generally speaking, if you have the ability to attack from a brush, if there's no downside to it, just do so. Because you get double the passive stacks. It's a very nice thing to have. Now we see three people on the map. Diana just left to the top left side, which means we can finally take this tower and go for practice place. The enemy cannot defend this, and if they try to, they die. But yeah, playing against Lux, by the way. Fun, by the way. Oh, he's actually going for Bloodthirster here. Nice. Nice. Getting another wave because he has the time to do so, so the enemy doesn't have the opportunity to take away, uh, to do chip damage to the tower. Very important to keep that one in mind as well. And yeah, now it's time, like, now the best idea for him to go, like, the best lane to go, from my point of view, would be top lane. Uh, the reason is they are playing against Karma mid lane, she has wave clear, and she, he wants to go into a lane that doesn't have wave clear. Which is the Riven. Which they can also bully. Because you see, Karma throws one binding here, wave is gone, and now he has to retreat to the bottom lane again, to deny the enemy the tower, when he could be the one punishing the Riven. Potentially, unless the Ruin one-shots him, which should not be the case with a Lulu. So yeah, I think that would be the most optimal play. Because as a Caitlyn, you want to uh, like uh, travel around the map as much as possible and take down every single tower because your champion is a sieging champion. You deny space by placing traps. You have in like you have insane range, and that is something you have to play um, out your advantage. He's even debating going to wit's end because of, yeah, the enemy's magical damage profile. And yeah, like, I think, honestly though, I think they should give Caitlyn some kind of change. I think her laning is completely fine. It's really, really powerful, really strong. Overpowered, per se, maybe. Um, But I think she doesn't do enough damage as the game goes on. It feels very weird, because this champion comes from a very strong laning phase to just doing nothing. Riven comes from the side here, Ghost being popped, jumping away, Lulu also coming out, it's a lot of damage, getting condemned here, look at the damage now. And most of the damage comes from the Lulu though. That is what I'm constantly trying to say, like most of this damage came from the Lulu. Like do you see all the magic numbers popping up when he hits something? That is just too insane. Does the Lulu have Ardent? Yeah, she has Ardent completed. So you gain like, what is it, like 30, 35% attack speed from Ardent? How much is it from second ability? 40, 35, 50? I always forget. So let's just say you get 70 from Lulu's second ability and her Ardent. And then you gain a Pix that does, I don't know, at this point, 110 damage per hit? Plus the Ardent only damage as well? Like you see, like this is just crazy amounts of damage. And it's non-RNG related. And against Diana, you just have to make sure to block her path with traps so she cannot jump into you. Oh, look at all the damage he's taking. Diana just gets this for free because he cannot find space to go in. There's no one to create space for. Like, the enemy team just pokes, pokes, pokes with the karma. And his team is not running in, therefore he's not able to do anything. Like, he can't just walk forward and do something because he will just instantly die. And it's very depressing if that happens, because, yeah... <laughs> Uh, dying is kind of bad, you know, in-game. Well, not only in-game, but you get the idea. And yeah, back to the same old issue in the mid lane of Mantra Qs being thrown into the wave on cooldown, making it very difficult to siege here. And it's just a matter of time until the enemy uh, comes from side lanes here. So yeah, um, AD carry in general, you want to rotate to the lane that you can push towers in. 
If the enemy laner in mid is a wave clear champion that you cannot push into, go, don't rotate there. It's not gonna do you anything good. However, if you are just want, if you just want to farm, and mid lane is usually the safest lane to farm because there is uh, not much that can happen to you relative to side lanes, then you can stay mid lane to just get some uh, sustain, Ooh, get some gold. And as for flashy under the Dan ultimate, nice combo by the Darius as well. Darius collects the kill, but the ultimate gets the reset as well. This is an instant on Nash spawn. Diana can just commit that one of the biggest mistakes because now. Now one thing changes, okay? Remember when I talked about the mid lane wave clear? Now with Diana dead, they'll be allowed to push mid lane because the wave clear doesn't work anymore due to the Baron minions. Not only this, they also gain time. They get gold from the Nasher and time. Because now clearing waves gets... Oh my dear Jesus, that was close. And because now... Clearing these waves becomes so much more difficult for the enemy. They have double wave clear, yes, with Lux and the Karma, but still, they will not be able to kill these cannon minions. And with that in mind, this mid lane tower is just a matter of time until it falls. It will fall, and with it falling, uh, there's, there's going to be a lot less security because rotating between the lanes, between the, the bottom tier 2 and the top tier 2 will be a lot easier. Because look at the damage on the wave now. It's, it's just a joke. So yeah, he just takes this down for free. And now they have better entry towards the jungle for better vision. The enemy has not as many places to just retreat to. And the only downside now is nothing will be happening for quite some time again. Nothing is on the map. The enemy team um, doesn't necessarily have a reason to walk out of their base apart from Riven just enjoying their time in the uh, nether of Minecraft, I think. So yeah. Um... The best they can do is try to pillage enemy jungle, look to bait the enemy into fights that are not favorable for them, and just wait. Because yeah, this is one of the biggest issues if you play against these compositions and you don't have anything to just hard force, you just get put in these spots. The Mundo damage though, and now he just can't really follow, the Karma ultimate just denies his pathing, he doesn't have flash, avoids the binding by the lock, deals so much damage, pops her, thanks to the power of the Lulu, always important to mention, honor your Lulu mains. And yeah, now the transitioning happens, Karma comes over with a, a cheeky <laughs> little mantra key, but nothing else will happen. And yeah, they actually managed to take this down because the enemy, like Lux, had no business walking up so far. And that's why she got killed. And if she doesn't die, nothing like this happens. Because you see, most of these deaths in Wild Rift happen because people want to do things that are not necessary. And why do they want to do that? Because they deem them fun, because they don't get punished usually. Because, let's be honest, how many times, let, let me know, how many times during the laning phase have you gotten frozen on legitimately and not just you pushing the wave over and over again, asking your jungler to help? How many times did your enemy laner actively punish you for you making mistakes? And I'm not, I'm not saying I was pushing for 30 seconds and the enemy jungler came around. That, that doesn't count. <laughs> Yeah, now we have the next dragon spawning. Another, I think, 30 seconds until the next Nasha spawns, if we can uh, trust his timer. He really wants to go there, but he needs the Lulu to be with him. Like, he really wanted to go to the top lane. 23 HP. Okay, there he is, bro. No problem. He really wanted the Lulu to come in with him onto the bottom lane, because the enemy just got a free uh, top lane, a free uh, bounty on tier 2, which is something you don't want to happen. Because at these stages, right now, it's more about the 90 enemy free gold and not giving away bounties until the next Nasher spawns. And with the next shield here being already uh, gone for the enemy team with the bottom inhibitor, the next Nasher is basically the ending of this game. So yeah, all that, all that happens will lead up to this Nasher. So they need to con uh, take control over this Nasher right now, uh, pillage the enemy jungle. With this done... They will look for a potential option to just take it immediately. They just need to make sure to deny the enemy entry to every possible uh, from every possible angle. And if the enemy walks too close, it's just a free kill angle. Nice ghost avoiding the pull in by the mantra uh, by the ultimate of karma, dealing a lot of damage. But needs to be really, really careful. Riven flashed into his face, but he has a Lulu, so he is very much tankier than you expect him to be. Picks up the honeyfruit really quick. The Lulu uses ultimate to just keep him safe as well. Needs to be careful though. Still has flash available. And makes another retreat. 
he, as long as he has flash, everything is kind of fine. But if you don't have flash as an AD carry, um, things might get very, very problematic very fast. And this is a free natural angle again, because we see free people of the enemy in their base. But Darius doesn't realize again for whatever reason and goes for a stupid play, which doesn't accomplish anything and dies for fun. Because he wants to chase into the enemy jungle rather than baiting the enemy towards him when both of the teams want to get Nasher. So they will do something to get there. Because they don't want to give it away for free. Nice trap here. The nice D Diana entry here puts the trap under her face again. She just literally can't move. This is one of the most powerful tools you have against these, uh, these champions. And again, was it necessary for the enemy team to chase after them? No, they had Baron for free as well. So why would they do this? Well, I don't know. For fun, I guess, like the Darius, for fun. Because most of the people are like, I see a kill, I go for it. But what does the kill give you? What does using your summoner spell 30 seconds before the objective grant you? Like, for example, strategic, like if you have the ability to strategically die before an objective, like before Herald, 30 seconds before a Herald, and you take away five enemy ultimates and their flash. It is the most worthwhile thing you can do. Like all of this has consequences. You just need to know what you can do with these things. And again, here he will deny entry. And there is, you, yes, okay, then what is good? Fine and fine. Uh, is everything is okay? He denies entry onto the right side. The Mundu here stands guard. So we see the Diana come in, place the pink ward. If, as long as nobody walks close there, that she can jump over, everything will be fine. Now with the Elder, we will secure Nasher. Okay. Right now is the opportunity to do Nasher. We do not fight by running at them. We want to lure them towards us because if we get Nasher, we end the game. That is an automatic, like an automatic thing. So they come to us while we do Nasher and we wipe them. They do not come to us, they lose. So it's a lose-lose situation. So now with Baron Nasher being gone, we push multiple lanes and make sure that we don't lose the game in bot lane because nobody pays attention to this. And then we just walk it down mid lane. You see, the enemy is just overextended here. They are two mages. They are not allowed to do so. And they just dissipate. The perfect play would have probably been... I don't see if the Lulu used Veil, but it's fine. But the enemy wasn't in a spot where they can do anything about this. So yeah, he's just punishing them. Because you saw all the dangerous people on the map. And yeah, you just kill them. It's very simple, you see? Boop. Oh! Lives. It's bad, man. Diana is here. Runs her down with the Elder. It just doesn't have to care. Pops the Ghost. Ah, uh, you can't flash this. And then Zon is on the spot and hunts them down. Very nicely played. And with that, we are at the end of this video. Thank you all for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and check out Mr. Chronix in the description below. We'll see each other for more content very, very soon. See you guys.